This is the Travel and Tourism Show on Star FM. Good evening and welcome to the Travel and Tourism Show on Star FM sounding good all the time. I'm Mazwi Shamu. If you've been following the show, you'll know that in our previous show with Emmanuel Fundira, we talked about the relationship that exists between politics and tourism. The slightest political activity can create either a positive or negative image or perceptions. I'm pleased to have Dr. Kariko Gakaseke in the studio tonight, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority. And he's going to tell us how the tourism industry is managing at the moment. Dr. Kaseke, it's always an honor having you on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Please feel free to follow tonight's conversation on my Facebook page, Mazwi Shamu. I would love to hear from you. Dr. Kaseke, following the recent acts of politically motivated violence in Harare, you sent out a communique as the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority explaining the state of tourism in Zimbabwe. Could you tell us more about that? Yeah, we thought it was necessary for us to send out that communique because uh, remaining silent was not going to be helpful because a lot of inquiries were coming. People asking, Can we, could we continue? consider cancelling our travel to Zimbabwe? Could we consider cancelling our activities in Zimbabwe? And we thought uh, the best way to answer, because the questions were not coming from one market, they were coming from all over the markets. And we thought uh, we should send that community to just reassure. It was a reassuring community, reassuring all would-be travellers to Zimbabwe that uh, Zimbabwe is still a very safe destination regardless of those uh, activities that we refer to. Mm. So if you go to my Facebook page, Mazwi Shamu, or to the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority page, you'll see the communique that Dr. Kaseke is talking about. How was this received? Have you received any feedback? Very much, uh, very much. And uh, we can uh, really say that, um, for example, at um, Elephant News, there were people who were coming for a conference, which they wanted to cancel. They've communicated uh, just yesterday that they're no longer cancelling the proposed conference. This was a, it's a conference of international players who, who are coming here for an incentive conference where they come and have their conference in Zimbabwe. So um, I think uh, a lot of positive response or responses from that community have been received so far. And we think uh, we can say uh, happily that uh, we think we did the right thing. Mm, I agree. Um, do you think it's too early to actually see or to make an assessment to see whether we've lost income within this short space of time or not? And if we have, how much and how can we bounce back from that? No, there's no need for us to bounce back because we never bounced out. So there's, uh, you can only bounce back when you've bounced out. And uh, to be honest with you, yes, we want to say the incidents that happened on the 1st of August are regrettable. They were unfortunate. So what happened on that day does not reflect the true culture of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a peaceful nation. It's a nation of peace-loving people. And what happened on that day is uh, completely regrettable and we condemn it in the strongest of terms. Yes, we are also very, very, very much sympathetic to the families that lost their loved ones, and we paid our own condolences to them. But what happened is not the culture of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a peaceful country, and uh, Zimbabweans have been very much following our president. Our president has been uh, preaching peace at every other gathering that uh, you give him an opportunity to talk. He talks peace. He was preaching peace all over to everybody. And I think Zimbabweans had really, really embraced the peace message from our president. So what happened uh, in the um, midst of uh, a president who is preaching peace, it shocked us. And what happened also in Blowayo earlier on, uh, the, uh, at, at, at a rally where an attempt on the president was done, it also uh, shocked us. So this is a man who is preaching peace. He preaches peace every other opportunity he gets. So we think Zimbabweans generally, if, if not all Zimbabweans, love peace. Mm. So they follow the president, they follow the peace messages, and um, 
they are a peaceful nation. So we never bounced out. I want to be very honest with you. The incidents that happened never put us at a, any disadvantage in terms of tourism. Uh, no cancellations uh, can be talked about if we've been received. Yes, there was one postponement. Uh, which people postponed their visit to a later date. So it's not a cancellation. Not a cancellation. No revenue was lost in that in that yes. regard. So basically, we are what we were before the incident took place. Your communique, it, it mentioned mm-hmm. that the Harare CBD was the place that was affected. My concern is that Harare is our main gateway. Yeah. Are there plans? Uh, we know that tourism is growing. We know that Victoria Falls is now another gateway that we have to the country. Are there plans to further expand, maybe, Victoria Falls um, or other destinations that can also become gateways to our country in the event hmm. of other th- threats that could happen to tourism? Not necessarily political threats, but even mm-hmm. things like natural disasters, diseases, things like that. Yeah, um, as you know, we are coming from a very difficult situation, which uh, we underwent for almost uh, two decades. And uh, this uh, state, with its current leadership, is uh, very positive about tourism. They see tourism as one of the pillars that will support the economic turnaround of this nation. And plans, there are numerous plans that um, will be implemented uh, in line with the president's vision. How do we become a middle income nation by 2030 when we are saying uh, tourism is one of the pillars and we're not doing something substantial about it. So plans are there and we are very much uh, informed. Most of the plans are not under our purview. Uh, definitely the majority of the plans are not under our purview. They fall under other uh, sectors or other ministries or other authorities, uh, other parastatals and uh, that's why we, are, we say tourism is a collaborative, a highly collaborative uh, activity. If we don't collaborate with the, these other players, we won't achieve much. We can only achieve what we can achieve as a single entity, but tourism is never, has never been like that. It will never be like that. So it's a highly collaborative. You need to collaborate with everyone you are working with for the benefit of tourism in the nation. So plans are there. Mm. I'm interested in what you said, that tourism is one of the pillars of economic development. As a nation, we've been talking about mass unemployment, and we know that the tourism industry creates thousands upon thousands of jobs worldwide. Where are we as a country, and what initiatives are there for people to tap in or where can they find information where they can also be part of the tourism industry and be employed and be involved? Okay, I must first of all uh, really reconfirm so that I, I, I array your concerns. Okay. Uh, tourism at the moment is employing both directly and indirectly over 300,000 people. As we, as we are talking today in Zimbabwe. Wow. Because when you look at tourism, every nine arrivals creates one job. Mm. So when you look at the level of arrivals we have in this country and the number of people who are employed directly and indirectly and to some extent induced employment is over 300,000 people. So if we, are, if we are looking at that, yes, it's confirmed. Tourism is one of the major imp- employment creators in any nation. So, but and the jobs that are created in tourism are not um, what I might want to call low-cost jobs. Mm. People where, who are, okay, I'm sorry, I must compare. Uh, it's like when we're when looking at people who are employed in the agricultural sector, in the farming industry, and those who are employed in the tourism sector, those employed in the tourism sector earn far much higher. The lowest employee in a farm gets almost uh, three times lower than the lowest employee in the tourism sector. So Mm. the employment is also 
very uh, uh, valuable in terms of when you look at uh, the employment that is created in tourism. So, yes, tourism creates a lot of employment for our people, and that's why this government is serious about tourism. This government is serious about employment creation. We have heard about um, the president uh, saying that uh, he wants to create jobs and he's looking at us in the tourism sector to play our full role in that, to that extent that jobs are created in the tourism sector. And uh, our projections, yes, we've done our projections. Unfortunately, we have not yet launched our sector strategy, but we are, we are projecting um, employment in the tourism sector uh, to be in excess of 700,000 by 2025. So basically we are simply saying tourism plays a major role in terms of employment creation. Mm. Just as you are speaking, I was also thinking that, you know, we, we keep thinking about employment creation, and but tourism is a very diverse and... Um, what you know dynamic industry what advice can you give people who are sitting mm. at home with degrees certificates in hospitality in 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 various sectors within the tourism industry what advice can you give them to actually start getting involved now how can they get involved yeah the, um, what we are saying what we are saying to them what we have been saying to them uh, as as late as today we the seminar to holiday in what we have been saying to them as late as today is that uh, tourism is the industry of the future tourism industry is uh, is the highest potential in terms of enriching our nation in terms of um, uh, also meeting the objectives of our government. And we have been advising them that uh, uh, we don't want to say everybody who gets um, who, who graduates from a university should come, should come and form a tourism company. No. We need most of these people to be employees, but we need a substantial level of entrepreneurship in the tourism sector and we are simply saying uh, this uh, entrepreneurship begins with everybody else and it begins with you as, as I'm talking to you now and it begins with everybody else. We need entrepreneurs in the tourism sector who will create employment for the many, many school leavers who are leaving school today. Mm. I'm going to take us back to safety and security issues for tourists mm -hmm. <laughs> what advice can you give to tourists to ensure um, safety in the event that tourism is threatened within a destination by way of natural disaster by way of political activity by way of disease like we said it depends on the nature of uh, the incident or accident or disaster that we have occurred. We have got plans for various uh, forms of disaster, either political disasters, if it's not a political disaster, if it is a, a, a tsunami or some kind of disease that uh, attacks uh, like Ebola, we have got uh, plans and that's why we work, like I said earlier on to you, uh, tourism is a highly collaborative. If it is a, 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 a health disaster, what can we do without the Ministry of Health? What can we do without um, the Civil Protection Department of the Ministry of Local Government? What can we do without the uniformed forces? So all oh, everybody else, they, they are part of many of, many of our plans that we have. So um, uh, the, the advice is that whenever there is a disaster, that's why we issued that community. We had assessed the level. We had pro pro predicted that uh, this situation is under control, and we issued that community. So, please always look for our community, and we'll be communicating every day or every hour, if that require is if that is required, depending on the nature of the disaster. We will be communicating every day if that is the requirement, or every hour 
if that is the requirement. Mm. So please watch out for our communities. Okay. Do we have tourist information centers? Yes. Where yes, yes, information can be accessed? Yes. Where? Every every province has got a tourism information center, which we call Tourism Publicity Association, that we fund. So if you look, if you go to Manigaland, there's a tourism information center there. If you go to Gweru, Midlands, there's a tourism information center. Wherever you go, all the 10 provinces plus other uh, tourism resorts, they've got tourism information centers. Uh, there's a, a tourism information center, for example, for Matabrini North province, but there's also another tourism say, information center for Victoria Falls itself. So there are more than, uh, I think there are 23 information centers in the country at the moment. Mm. I've also noticed a lot of tourism police within yeah. destinations, particularly our tourist destinations. But I think maybe in urban areas, because <coughs> we're so busy doing other things, we don't actually notice them. But I've noticed their presence um, in and around destinations and urban cities. Have you been involved as the tourism authority in the induction in terms of customer care, in terms of safety, in terms of security for visitors who come to the destination? Yeah, you can't believe this. Uh, <coughs> we, are all, we are actually in charge of training mm. our tourism police. We actually t take them through uh, some training program which they will have to pass not only uh, to we give them certificates of competence. So there's not, a test involved? Yes, not only certificate of attendance. <laughs> but uh, you might also know that even in the mainstream police, we, oh, whenever police are being trained, we are also asked to go and give some lectures on what we expect the police to do. Uh, even during the <laughs> old era, surprisingly, we were doing that. But it's only that... Uh, no one was uh, really serious about implementing what we were giving them, but we were very happy with uh, the, gen the police uh, commissioner general, who is currently heading the police now, and um, even his uh, PR department is actually very doing very well in terms of supporting us. So um, we, uh, we must salute the police for the cooperation that we are having with them, and uh, we will continue uh, giving uh, some talk where we are required or training police where we are required. Tourism police are selected in, co in, co in consultation with us. And when we train them, we are maybe the main trainer. Of course, they are trained in law, basic uh, law and other things that uh, are done by the police. But when it comes to tourism, it's us who gives them what they are expected to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are not only in the resorts, they are even here in Arare. If you go to any uh, major hotel, you find tourism police, uh, they are there. So we are very much happy with the support we are getting from the police. I hope the support will keep on coming. That's impressive. And that's exactly what you were saying just now, that tourism employs directly and indirectly. Yes. And through that, contributing to the economy of the country. That is true. Oh, we always seem to run out of time when we have plenty to talk about. Um, my final question for tonight, how can you reassure the ordinary person on the streets in Zimbabwe? The visit to the, to the country... Um, wondering, should I visit Zimbabwe? Should I not? Um, and the tourism operator who is looking at the season saying, yeah, we're moving into the festive season. What is happening? How can we maintain this momentum of bringing in visitors and bringing in investment? What words of advice can you give? Yeah, in when, I, when I issued a statement that Zimbabwe is too a safe destination, that is the reassurance that uh, I am still repeating today. Uh, no one wants to go to a destination where he is not assured of his safety. People want to go to a destination where safety is paramount uh, for any traveler, for any visitor of any nation. So we are simply saying that uh, Zimbabwe is too a very safe destination. It is the safest destination in the region, probably the safest destination in Africa, maybe globally. So we are simply saying that if you are looking at uh, coming to Zimbabwe, please 
I'm inviting every citizen of this world that you are very safe when you visit Zimbabwe. Thank you. That's Dr. Kaseke, the Chief Executive Officer of the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority, speaking to us about the state of Zimbabwe's tourism. Dr. Kaseke, thank you so much thank for you. coming through. Thank you. We do still have a number of things that we wanted to ask you. So we are hoping that you can come back and we can continue with our discussion on tourism in general in Zimbabwe next week. Thank you very much. That's all we have for you tonight. Um, visit my Facebook page, Mazwi Shamu, and send um, comments, send messages. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, let me know what you've been up to. And until next time, happy traveling. Thank you for tuning in to the Travel and Tourism Show on Star FM. 